Silence for calling out politics in the pulpit, Emma's departure has sparked a rebellion within our band now. We're planning a Sunday morning walkout that could change everything. My church's youth group has a youth band that leads worship during youth, but the church also has them lead worship on Sunday mornings every few weeks to promote the youth band when the usual worship team has a week off. I'm not in the band, but I often help with lyric PowerPoints along with another girl, but not when the band plays on Sundays. The main singer of the youth band is the daughter of a youth assistant, and the daughter is an assistant too. We'll call her Emma. She's 20. I'm writing because of what happened the last time the youth band led Sunday worship on 6.30th, that led to Emma and her family leaving the church. In between one of the songs, Emma said she felt led to say that Christian nationalism wasn't of God. Because forcing people to believe went against the basis of Christianity. Because God gave free will and too many Christians forgot that. She also said there would be no short and narrow path if people were forced to walk it before saying Project 2025 was advertised as Christian but resembled nothing of God. Because God never forced people to believe in him, no one confronted her or anything as it was brief. And they played a few more songs along with the closing song after the pastor finished his sermon. But when we got to youth on Friday night, Emma and her mother weren't there, and we were later informed by the youth pastor, that Emma and her mom would no longer be helping the youth before a bunch of stuff about giving others the chance to be lead singers because Emma had left the church. However, word got out from one of the band's players that Emma told the band that she got banned during the week and that her parents left the church with her. So they already knew before we found out at youth. The reason I'm putting together this post is because of a private conversation I had with the band members and the other PowerPoint girl last Friday, the same day our youth pastor made the announcement. We made sure it was just between us, away from the rest of the kids in the group. To cut to the chase, the band is genuinely upset about what happened to Emma, and they're bouncing around different ideas on how to respond. The idea that seems to be gaining the most traction is staging a walkout the next time they're scheduled to play on a Sunday. The plan is to show up, play the opening intro song as usual because that's how every service kicks off. With an intro before someone officially welcomes everyone to worship and right after that, they'd pause, voice their support for Emma openly, and then walk out as a united front. Right now, they're keeping this whole plan under wraps, only discussing it amongst themselves to avoid any leaks. The biggest issue we're all wrestling with is the potential fallout, especially how our parents might react if we go through with this, and whether it's a risk that's worth taking. We have a little bit of time on our side since there's probably still a few weeks left before the band is scheduled to perform again. Plus, the church hasn't even chosen a new lead singer yet since Emma stepped down. One more thing that I think is important to mention is that the church didn't upload the worship segment from the service where Emma performed that day. Normally, they always include the entire worship session in their YouTube uploads, but this time they only posted the sermon. That was a huge red flag for us. Many of the band members are especially worried about how this might impact their tuition as some of them rely on their parents' financial help for school. Despite this, there's still a strong desire among them to do something meaningful in support of Emma. And, even though I'm not technically a member of the band, other than helping out with coordinating the PowerPoint lyrics every now and then, I felt that the least I could do was seek advice from adults outside of our circle. We don't want to ask our parents for input because, well, we already know how they'd react. And I figured maybe some of you could help us weigh out the pros and cons more objectively. So, if anyone out there has any advice, I'd be really grateful if you could share it. I promise to pass along anything you say to the band, too. And thanks for sticking with me through this long post. One last detail I forgot to add earlier, our pastor has a history of using the pulpit to push political agendas. He's openly supported a specific presidential candidate multiple times and has even voiced his opinions on topics like Roe v. Wade and Lep to rights. So, this isn't just about Emma, there's a lot more to unpack here and it's part of why the band feels so strongly about taking a stand, so while I agree that politics probably shouldn't be spoken in church. Some of the band said that Emma was tired of the often political topics being brought up during sermons, thus why she said what she said, comments from the first post. Comment 1 OP, I am not Christian, but standing up to the tyranny of Project 2025 is the most Christian thing I've heard. That sounds exactly like what you should be doing against something that represents hate and violence. Christian nationalism is why many people are starting to make fun of or roll their eyes at Christian values, because from what we see, Christian nationalism is the exact opposite thing Jesus would want or support. I don't believe in him, but I do think God slash Jesus would be proud of you. You sound like a good person. 
comment to, hey, I hope you see this despite all of the responses. I was raised Catholic, I consider myself otherwise now, but that is how I was raised, and I was an altar server and lead singer for Mass I was very involved in my church. My priest was an amazing human being who never brought politics into service. He was so kind and so caring to everyone in the community. When I lost my faith, he was an amazing person to talk to and he never shamed me. That being said, other people in the church hated this about him and became vocal about it. It was exactly this political behavior that made me turn away from the church in the first place. I thought it was horrible to mix politics and faith. I strongly disagreed with it and wanted no part in it. I started exploring the history of my faith and other faiths. I wanted to know why. Why were we trying to dictate people's lives when Jesus told us not to? Why were we cruel to the poor and the sinful when Jesus' message was to forgive? Why when the church had so much wealth and power did they wield that power like a club, forcing themselves onto the vulnerable and desperate? In the end, it is all about control. Whether you believe in God or not is one thing. But believing in the church is to believe in a man-made organization. Flawed people created these institutions and like people, they are flawed too. A community organization has the power to uplift as much as it has the power to control and beat down, and that is what it all comes down to, doesn't it? Your friend could not be controlled, so they kicked her out. And now here comes the big question. Knowing all of this, can your conscience be at peace if you stay silent? When I was your age, I could not. Do what you believe is truly right, even if it's hard. Even if it's uncomfortable, you will always become better for it. Edit, wow, thanks for the awards, guys. And OP, if you see this, please update us. I would love to know how this update. I want to thank to everyone who commented on my original post because it was way more than I expected and many of you had really helpful advice. This is a small update with some really surprising things that happened since. First, the band is still going through with the walkout and they're keeping it within the band so that no other kids tell their parents who might tell leaders. It would have been awesome to include others but the risk of the church catching wind was too great. Second, we have a date of eight quarters when the youth band will do worship for the adults again. Third, the youth pastor appointed a singer from within the group who will take turns singing on Sundays with future participants in the coming weeks. Fourth, the new singer agreed that the church's handling Emma was BS. Fifth and most exciting, two of the band members told non-religious relatives about the situation in fear of punishment, and they agreed to come to the service and let them head to their cars in the parking lot straight from the walkout for safety. They won't leave the lot in case some parents try to claim kidnapping, but will be in their cars if all goes well, and the rest of us are going to ask our relatives too. Sixth, one of the band members told a teacher they knew from school who's thinking about coming and walking out too. And seventh, one of the band members wrote a little something that the lead singer will read before they walk off stage. And it would be great if anyone with editing experience could help to make it clearer or provide advice on what to add. They tried to keep it short. I will make a post about their write-up in the near future. Here's how we hope it happens. The band will play the opening song, which officially starts service and usually lets people know it's starting. Many make their way from the foyer during the intro song. And after the welcome prayer is given following the opening song, the lead singer will take the mic and give the speech that we've all been working on before the entire band walks off the stage. It's going to be a powerful moment, and I plan on standing up and walking out with them from the pews along with friends and some relatives who feel the same way we do. One of my relatives even mentioned that she might bring a few more people she knows, which would make an even bigger statement to the church. Imagine it's not just a group of young band members leaving, but adults too. The whole church will see that this isn't just some rebellious act by a few teenagers. It's something that resonates with all of us, regardless of age. One of our relatives will also be recording the entire thing just in case any of the parents decide to confront us afterward or if things don't go smoothly. I'll definitely update everyone after it all goes down. If anyone has more advice or thoughts on how we should handle this, I'm all ears and will make sure to share it with the band. Most of the band members are still too young to vote, only two of the seniors can this year, but this is our way of standing up for what we believe is right. It's about pushing back against something that's taken root in Christianity and corrupted it, Christian nationalism. In our eyes, it's causing the church to lose all the respect it once had, and we want to be able to say that we did our part. Even if it's just a small act, we're not naive, we don't expect that this walkout will suddenly change the entire church. But at least we'll be able to look ourselves in the mirror and know that we didn't just stand by and do nothing. One of the other commenders here said something that really hit home. Can you live with yourself if you don't do anything? That question has been a question has been a question has been echoing in my head ever since. And the answer is clear, no, we can't. That's why this matters so much to us. 
I also want to clarify something that I forgot to mention in my first post. Emma didn't just blurt out what she said out of nowhere. She's been vocal about the pastor's political comments for a while now, and the band members can back that up because they've seen it too. I've witnessed some of it firsthand as well. Despite this, I've received a lot of DMs, with some people many claiming to be Christians disagreeing with what the band is planning to do. They think Emma was wrong for using the microphone to express her thoughts during the service. They said she should have gone to the pastor directly instead of hijacking the service and called her actions immature. But let me break down what exactly the pastor has been doing from the pulpit. He's mentioned Trump numerous times, especially in the aftermath of the 2020 election, where he openly voiced his discontent over the results. He's even celebrated the overturning of Roe v. Wade during a sermon and criticized Pride Month in June, going so far as to compare Trump's legal trial to the persecution Jesus faced before his crucifixion. These are the kinds of things that have absolutely no place being preached from the pulpit, and it's been going on for years now. So, yeah, Emma didn't just hijack the service. She was speaking out against something that's been festering in our church for far too long. I've had mixed reactions from people after my first post with some showing support and others not so much. But we're standing firm in what we believe. This isn't just about Emma, it's about standing up against something bigger that's hurting our faith community. And whether people agree with us or not, we know in our hearts that we're doing what feels right however, when I showed the band the advice from my posts. I also told them about the DMs, and they said that Emma spoke to a leader about the pastor's political sermons in the past, but nothing came from it as he continued to speak politics from the pulpit frequently. Some people also said that our walkout wasn't godly because we, like Emma, would be hijacking the service for a publicity stunt when church was supposed to be about God. Some people called us immature among harsher things, but we disagree for two reasons. First, who is supposed to call out the misuse of the pulpit if not people who attend the same church where it's misused? A few DMs said to do nothing and pray for God to change the pastor's heart, but he's been doing this for years. And second, the Bible gives guidance on how to call out improper behavior in the church in Matthew 1 8 1 5. 17. Dealing with sin in the church. 15. If your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. If they listen to you, you have won them over. 16. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. 17. If they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. Emma has already talked to a leader one-on-one, -on -one, and the band has voiced displeasure about Emma's band to the youth pastor, only for him to disagree and say that Emma was out of line. Regarding the part about, tell it to the church, I suppose the how might be up to interpretation. Maybe telling the church means telling a church leader instead of the congregation on stage. But Emma and the band have talked to various leaders, including an elder too, aside from our youth leader, only for years of political rants from the pulpit to continue. When Jesus flipped tables in Matthew 2, 1, 1, 2, we believe he did it because people were using the temple to sell things that had nothing to do with God. And we believe that politics falls into the same boat. Someone commented a link in the comments of my first post that I never saw, but I showed the band and we couldn't agree more. Pastor Lauren Livingston talked about the role of politics in the church and how politics shouldn't help be combined with Christianity. I still plan to speak with my parents ahead of eight quarters and I'll share the white up the band is working on really soon. I really appreciate everyone who commented too. Lastly, I want to clarify that the walkout is the band's decision entirely. I am not a member of the band, I just do PowerPoint lyrics during youth. And I'm not even in the band's group chat with Emma as some of the band members are contemplating punishments from parents. Two seniors who are concerned with their parents removing tuition help. I will support whatever they decide while understanding that they have to take care of their future too as many commented. If they decide to continue with the walkout, I will support them and walk out from the pews. But if they change their mind because the repercussions are too great, I will respect that and continue to support them. Comments from the update comment one, my views on religion and churches are a whole other thing. I'm impressed by the conviction to your sense of right and wrong and your need to not sit by while someone spews falsehoods from their platform, a platform which Christians will claim is supposedly a place from which love and truth emanate. Much respect to you and yours, those telling you to prey on it and that it isn't your place are cowards. Being afraid to rock the boat is how religions get twisted. It sounds like your church is well down the slippery slope of becoming a cult to a guy who, when asked about his favorite Bible verse, responded vaguely, like he hasn't read the book. Op, I was a little surprised when a few of the people who called themselves Christians in the DMs even used profanity against my first post. But change doesn't happen unless it's addressed. 
and it's not like Emma and the others haven't addressed it with numerous leaders over the years. Comment 2, it is worth remembering that the original idea behind separating church and state was to protect religion from being tarnished by politics. The underlying idea was that religion is a garden that must be protected from the wilderness of the world. This church seems to be a prime example of that necessity. Comment 3, I have a lot of respect for all of you for taking this stand. Christian nationalism has no place in the church. It is completely against the teachings of the Bible. Stand strong in what you are undertaking. You are biblically grounded in your stand. The church was given its mission by Jesus to preach the good news in order to bring people to Christ. The church is not, nor should it ever be a mouthpiece for politics. I will keep all of you in my prayers. You are doing the right thing even though it may feel scary. Standing up against power is never easy. Comment for, hey Christian over here. First, I love that you have biblical references for what you guys are doing. Second, the idea of comparing Trump to Jesus, no matter the political views of yourself or the pastor is quite honestly blasphemous. So you're 100% doing the right thing. And third, you might not be old enough to vote yet, but here's the thing. If you have conviction about anything, anything, get passionate in this case, get mad, rock the boat and use your voice. It's what we're called to do. Will it be difficult and scary sometimes? Yeah, absolutely, but things that matter often are. So what I'm saying is you kids absolutely rock. You're far better examples of Christ-like behavior than your pastor is giving out right now in mad respect for that. Remember Joshua 1.9 and God's command. As you kids do this, have I not commanded you? Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged for the Lord your God will be with you wherever you go.